This ship is stuck in Montreal. Hi, I'm Peter Zubrowski with Halifax Shipping News, and today I want to bring you the story of the BBC St. Petersburg. The BBC St. Petersburg is a 2020 built general cargo ship that was uh, chartered to bring a load of grain and oats from Thunder Bay to uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. The ship arrived in Thunder Bay, loaded its cargo on May 16th, and then on the 18th, the owners of the cargo were informed that the uh, wheat did not meet specifications. By this time, the ship had left the Great Lakes and taken on bunkers in Montreal. The problem is the BBC St. Petersburg is now too low in the water to make it back to Thunder Bay to discharge the cargo where it was loaded. It can't do anything with the bunkers, so it needs to discharge the cargo at another Canadian port. By doing so, it would violate the uh, Canadian cabotage laws. In previous videos, we talked a lot about the Jones Act, which regulates the trade between US ports, uh, requiring that the cargo be transported by a US flagged and crewed ship. Canada has very similar laws in that transport between Canadian ports must be done by a Canadian ship and crew. However, if a Canadian ship is unavailable, uh, there's a process where uh, ship owners or uh, charterers can apply for a waiver to allow a foreign flagship to operate in Canada. This often happens in the offshore industry or if a uh, Canadian vessel is going out for repair. Unlike the situation currently going on with the Orion where a U.S. wind farm is being uh, staged out of Halifax, if that were a Canadian wind farm or a Canadian offshore oil and gas project, uh, the owners of the foreign vessel would simply apply for a waiver. And because there are no Canadian vessels available, they're typically granted. Um, so all the offshore uh, drill rigs operating off Newfoundland and in Nova Scotia when uh, these were happening are all foreign flagged operating under a waiver. So the BBC St. Petersburg now has to apply for a waiver so that it can discharge the load of wheat in uh, Sorel Tracy, Quebec, which is the closest available uh, facility, and then load another 8,000 metric tons of compliant wheat in uh, Sorel for delivery to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Under Canadian law, the uh, owner of the cargo, or in this case, the uh, ship's agent, Richardson, is required to uh, contact other Canadian operators to see if they have a vessel available. In this case, they contacted FedNav, Algoma, and McKeel, um, all of whom indicated that they did not have a uh, vessel available. And in the case of Algoma, indicated that they were supportive of Richardson's application to use the uh, BBC St. Petersburg to discharge cargo in Sorel. Uh, really, there isn't a viable option to use a Canadian vessel because that would mean unloading the BBC St. Petersburg uh, either at a terminal uh, or directly as a ship-to-ship -ship transfer to complete the voyage. And uh, Transport Canada and the uh, Coast Guard are uh, not super comfortable with uh, a ship-to-ship -ship transfer in the uh, Great Lakes system and would prefer discharge at a terminal. Organizations or persons who object to the application have until 5 p.m. Eastern Time, May 25th, to register their objection. And uh, there's an ability for the applicant to respond to that uh, before the Canadian Transportation Agency makes a final determination. In this case, it seems likely that the application will be allowed and the BBC St. Petersburg will sail from Montreal to Sorel, uh, discharge the bad wheat, and uh, reload some good product before uh, sailing for uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Anyway, that's all I have for you uh, today. If you like this video, uh, please like it and uh, subscribe to the channel. I will probably do a follow-up on this when uh, the BBC St. Petersburg makes it to uh, Sorel, assuming everything uh, goes according to what the plan is. Uh, subscribe and be notified when that's ready. And uh, thanks a lot. Have a great day.